Hi, it's Dr. Yu with another science experiment that from the Rochester Museum and Science Center. This is an activity that we can do to talk about atoms, right? We talk about how, you know, everything matters, and in science, everything is matter, right? Everything's made up of matter, and matter is made up of these little tiny things called atoms. There's all kinds of different atoms, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to make models of atoms with some things you might have at home. So what you're going to need is some candy that's got a hole in the middle, uh, I like to use gumdrops as another one, so gumdrops is a second candy. Some string, some toothpicks, scissors, and later we're going to do another activity where I'm going to use some M&Ms, but that's going to come a little bit later. I'm going to move that off to the side. So we're going to start with our atoms. So we're going to start by picking a number. Um, I would generally pick something between uh, 2 and 8. You could pick any number you want, but the bigger you go, just the bigger your atom's going to get. It's going to get complicated. So I'm going to start with 6. So I'm going to go with six, okay? So I'm going to start off by picking, I've got to pick six gumdrops, all of the same color. So I'm going to use purple. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those are going to represent my protons. So these are the positively charged particles that are in the center of the atom, the nucleus. I'm going to pick six more, and these are going to be my neutrons. So I'm going to pick red this time. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now I have my six positively charged protons and my six neutrons that have no charge. They are neutral. That's where they get their name from. Okay, so this is what you find inside the center of the atom. This is in the nucleus, the protons and the neutrons. So I'm going to use toothpicks to represent my nuclear forces that are going to hold those all together. So I'm going to just break the toothpicks up in half, and I'm going to start sticking these guys together in a big lump. And it doesn't really matter what shape, just a big kind of lumpy ball. And it doesn't matter what order you put them together in either. Okay, so now I have my kind of all stuck together nucleus, and my nucleus has my six protons and my six neutrons. So now what I want to do is I want to have my electrons. So my electrons, that's where my candy with the holes in it comes in. So I want to have the same number of electrons as protons. The electrons have a negative charge. The protons have a positive charge. They're going to balance each other out. So since I have six positives, I need six negatives. So that's where these come in. Now, for me, the first ring should only have, you're going to make two loops with your string. The first loop should only have two of the candies in it because the first energy level is can only ever have two electrons that's the max it can hold so i'm going to put my two on there i'm going to tie that in a string in a, in a knot so i can put that around so that's kind of my electrons are going to circle my nucleus they're going to go around in a circle uh, we call that an orbit. The orbits aren't always a circle, but it just so happens the first one is. So that kind of works nicely. Then I'm going to take all the rest of them, and I'm going to put them on the next string. And as long as you don't pick a number higher than 8, that works. All the rest of the electrons are going to fit on the next one. It gets kind of complicated after this in terms of, of how many electrons go on, on how many levels. So I wouldn't worry about that for your atom, for your, for your model. Just string these together. And you want this loop to be a little bit bigger than the last one because it's going to have to fit around that first one. Again, I'm going to tie that off in a circle. And there we go. So now we have our second orbit of four electrons that's around my first orbit of two electrons that's around my nucleus of six protons and six neutrons. So you might wonder, Dr. Yu, why did you pick six? Why is that important? Well, the number six isn't what's important, but we can actually figure out 
what element this is, which atom is it, based on what's here. So not everybody has one. I, I'm a chemist, so I always have periodic tables at home. So I can look at my periodic table. You can also always look up a periodic table on the internet, do a Google search for the image. But if I look at my periodic table, it looks like this. I know it looks really complicated, but I started with six protons. So I just need to look for the number six. And if I look for the number six, it takes me over to this big letter C right there. See the six above the C? So that means we made carbon. And because there are six protons and six neutrons, six plus six adds up to 12. This is carbon 12. Now there are actually different isotopes of different elements. Carbon actually has three different isotopes. It could be carbon 12, could be carbon 13, could be carbon 14. So carbon 12 is the most common one, but like carbon 14, that actually falls apart. It's, it has a radioactive decay. So when we talk about how do we know how old things like our mastodon is or other things that we might find um, from historic times, we can carbon date it. That means that we know how much carbon 12 there is so we know how much carbon-14 there is, and that carbon-14 falls apart over time. So based on how much is still there, we know how old it is. So how does that work? Well, what happens is if I added another neutron, so I'm going to get another red one. I'm going to add that in here. So now I would have seven neutrons and still six protons, right? So now I've made carbon-13. And if I were to add another neutron, get another red one here, stick that in there. Well, now I've got carbon 14 and it starts to get kind of unstable, right? It, it, there's not enough forces to hold everything together. So that's why it starts to fall apart after a while. So the half-life is how long it takes to fall apart. So let's see how that works. Okay, now's where my M&Ms come in. I'm gonna try another experiment. So. This is another fun thing you can do to figure out exactly how half-life works. So, I'm going to start with 50 M&Ms. I'm going to give it a good shake. I'm going to dump them out. All right. And I'm going to put in the bag the M's, the, the M&Ms that have the M's showing. So I'm just only going to pick out the ones that have an M showing. Okay, I think I got all of them. So that's all the M&Ms that had the M showing. So I'm gonna move those away. So I started off with 50, and then I went one time, and I've still got some more left in here. If I go another time, I dump them out, I'm gonna do the same thing again. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Only nine of them showed the M&M &M up. Right? So that second time I only had nine. So now if I do it again and I dump it out and I only take away the ones that have M's, right? One, two, three. And move those away. I just keep going until there's no M&Ms. Oh, wow. So all three of these have M's up. So I'm going to put that back. I'm shake it up. Dump it out. So only one of them has the M left. Five. All right. Oh, no M. Nothing left. Right? So the half-life is how long it takes for the atom to fall apart. It's half of them. Right? So in this case, in carbon-14, it takes 5,730 years for half of the carbon-14 to fall apart and go away. So every 5,730 years, half of the carbon-14 is gone. So it keeps getting cut down less and less and less and less and less. And that's how we can see how old something is. So if you tried this again, if we did this 10 times, see if you can find out, all right, is it always going to be 10 times for all of them to go away? Right? So you can do that experiment to see exactly how half-life works. It's kind of random. It's a 50-50 shot. 50-50, is it going to go away or is it not? But over time, you'll see that that number comes out to be pretty consistent. 
So that's our half-life experiment that you can try at home. And the best part about these experiments, they taste really good when you're done. Have fun experimenting at home. <laughs>